All right. Well, you have successfully completed a six solutions lab um, and you have seen some reactions. So we want to think about reactions a little bit so you can better an answer your analysis questions. So let's start with um, looking at how compounds interact. And we're going to start with this question. How do you know a reaction takes place? And so if you can just pause the video for a second and take a, a second to think about at least three changes you might observe. So, okay, you might have come up with some by now. So let's think of, of, of some changes. Well, you might observe changes like color changes. You might see what we call a precipitate form. Or another way of thinking that is a state change. Maybe you might have gas forming or bubbles. Okay, you may see a temperature change. Any of those may be indications that you have a reaction. Okay, so we're going to talk more about that later, but for today I just wanted to make sure you have a good understanding of what, how to write an equation, because in your analysis for your six solutions lab you need to be able to write an equation. So um, how to write a chemical equation, you need to know some information. Let me move my face out of the way here. Okay, so how to write a chemical equation in terms of your coefficients um, and reactants and products. What do these words mean? Well, if we look here on the left side of your, um, react, or your equation, um, you have what we call reactants. Now, reactants are the things that are going to combine or change to form your products. So always on the right side, reactants, or sorry, the left side, <laughs> the left side are your reactants, the products are on the right. Okay, and just like you read, um, in, in general, chemical reactions are going to go left to right. Okay, um, in this example, you also have something called a coefficient. Now, you already know what these subscript numbers mean. They are referring to the number of atoms in each um, compound, but or ion. But in this case, um, the coefficients tell you how many you need. For this lab, you don't need to worry about those. Okay, you're not going to try to balance these equations. You're really just trying to figure out what is your, what are your reactants and what are your products. In other words, what are you starting with and what are you ending with? In this case, you're starting with hydrogen gas and oxygen gas, and that combines to form our familiar water. Okay, moving on. So one type of, uh, one type of, I'm going to move this one more time. One type of uh, reaction is called single replacement. A single replacement reaction um, looks kind of like this. Well, you might have one um, on your reactant side. These are still your reactants. You may have a um, sample A and sample BC. Well, BC might be one substance. A may be another substance. And when they react, it may be that they reshuffle. So you can see in this little um, cartoon that, oh, what happened? Well, this guy caught in and changed partners. And so that's what you're seeing here, is that you're getting just a change, changing of partners. So that's a single replacement. We can also look at then at a double replacement reaction. And a double replacement reaction is very similar. And we have another cartoon here to help us understand. So if you take a second, look here. You've got yellow shirt guy with orange shirt girl, green shirt guy with white shirt girl, right? And then over here, they swap partners, all right? Again, here are our reactants. Uh, yep, yeah, reactants. And here are our products, all right? So what you're seeing here is essentially just a shuffling, right? So instead of A being with B, A is now with D. C is now with B instead of D here. Okay, this one is going to be important for you to see. So if you want to take a second and jot that down, that would be important. All right, let's move on. So let's take an exa uh, a um, look at an example of a double replacement. And the question we're asking here is, how can we finish this? 
So if we look at our um, reactant side, on the reactant side we're starting with NaCl, and um, which is sodium chloride, we should know how to say that now, and AgNO3, which stands for silver nitrate. So if I wasn't sure about those, I could go back, I'm going to show you my periodic table of elements, or ions, and I could find them on this periodic table again if I needed to. Um, so what we're trying to do here is we are trying to figure out what are the products? What is this a right side of the equation going to be? We know that in this case it's a double replacement. So I am going to put my plus sign because I know I'm going to get something here and something here. And so uh, the question is what are those things going to be? Well to start figuring this out what I need to do here is I need to break these um, compounds into their ionic components. So to do that I can look on my periodic table and find the charges for my uh, for these compounds, the ions in these compounds. And so we're going to start by finding the charge for Na. Na is Na plus. You hopefully know that one by now. Cl is Cl minus. Again, that one's pretty familiar. Okay. And then what does that mean for this one? Ag. If I looked at my periodic table, I'd find that Ag is Ag plus. And at um, nitrate, I can look up in the periodic table. Um, for my polyatomic ions and find that nitrate is NO3 minus. Okay, notice here I'm just focusing on what are the charges on these and what are the ions. Okay, now I need to shuffle. Okay, when I shuffle I'm really going to pay attention to which ones are pluses and which ones are minuses. Because when I um, recombine them, well I still have to have a plus and a minus for both because I know that I need them to you can't see the minus, let me move that over. Um, I know that I need that to be balanced and have um, a neutral compound on, on these. Okay? So here I'm going to start by well let's leave Na where it is. So Na we're going to put in the first spot. Okay, and we'll leave Ag where it is because it can't be with Na so it has to be the other one. And then what we do is we're just going to swap these guys. So I'm going to put NO3 here and Cl here. And then the last step for us in this problem is for us just to get rid of our pluses and minuses. And here's where we're going to just double check to make sure our charge is balanced for each. If they don't, we're going to have to figure out what our subscript number um, is going to be in these compounds. But in this case, plus and minus balance, plus and minus balance. So I'm just going to rewrite NaNO3 and AgCl. And this is going to be sodium nitrate. That one's going to be silver chloride. And that's all you have to do. So the final answer would be this reaction right there. Okay, And this would be the work as to how to get there. So again, I would just caution you about double checking to see that your charges work, making sure that you have a plus and a minus for both your products. All right, so the last thing I want to show you is just that those are only two of some um, several types of reactions. You can have reactions where you're combining two reactants to make one product. You can take a reactant and break it apart to make two products. And then we already saw these. This is the single replacement, and that's a double replacement. Those are just some examples of types of reactions. So that should be enough information to help you um, answer the questions for your analysis. All right, see you later.